Tonight's talk is how to fix your neck pain, how to finally fix your neck, how to look smarter, younger, and thinner, <laughs> and, or preventing injuries while looking good doing it. So that's, that's the title of tonight's talk. I think I'm going to accomplish everything that I want. There's the little bit of sizzle to go with the steak, but you're definitely going to have steak tonight. So the parts that, you know, obviously you should laugh at, you should probably laugh at those. Tonight's talk is going to be a lot about posture. Because posture has a lot to do with neck pain. Right? And posture has to do a lot with all kinds of pain. Not just neck pain, but neck pain is, is, uh, is what you're here for. So to demonstrate how important posture is, we're going to do our first little mini exercise. You can stay in your chair. What I want you to do is I want you to imagine uh, you having perfect posture, whatever that is. So I want everybody to sit up nice and tall. <coughs> sit up as nice as you can. And I want you to raise your arms up overhead. Don't hit the person next to you. So try to bring your arms forward. And just get a sense of how high your arms go. Right? Just get a sense of how high it is. Okay, and then just drop them. Very well done. This is a very intelligent group. Now I want you to channel your inner teenager. I want you to slouch. I want you to, your head to go forward. I want you to probably stop listening to me at this point. Right? I want, yeah, get on your cell phone if you need to. And in that super, in that super bad teenager position, I now want you to raise your arms again. Now, are those arms higher or lower than the first one? They should be lower, right? So my point is to illustrate how vital posture is. Right? So for example, somebody comes in and we're treating them for their shoulder problem. If we don't do something about their posture, we're probably not going to get their shoulder pain to go away because we haven't fixed the cause of their problem, which was their poor posture. So this is probably the most geeked out uh, slide that I have. So just bear with me. We'll get through this one and the next one, and then we won't be geeking out. But this is a little geeky uh, portion that I want you to see a spinal column, right? And this is what you look like if I took off all of your muscles and tendons and ligaments. And you will note that you have d uh, various curves in your spine. There's the cervical or neck, right? The thoracic or mid-back the lumbar or lower, and then the sacrum. Note that it's curved. You are meant to be curvy. Now, we're not talking these kind of curves. We're talking about the front to back curve. So you've got an, uh, a forward neck curve, a backward mid-back curve, a forward low back curve, right? So you're designed to have those kind of curves when we look at you from the side, both forward and backward. The reason you have that is those curves provide both flexibility and stability. So if you had a totally rigid straight spine, that would be really, really bad. That would be like your, your uh, shock absorbers being too tight on your car. And when you hit a pothole, your, wheel, you know, your, your mirrors would fall off. So you're designed to have these curves. You should have those curves. Flexibility, rigidity. Now, here's the last geeky uh, slide, and that is that you have muscles, tendons, and ligaments to attach to that spine to give you both flexibility and stability. Now, do you kind of hear that competing, contrasting functions, right? And that's the challenge for us, is how do we have both flexibility and stability? And when we have that balance go out of whack, that leads to your neck pain. These contrasts are why 95% of you are just about to raise your hand. Because I want to ask this question. How many of you have ever had back, neck, or shoulder pain? In all the years that I give this talk, everybody raises their hand. Because I don't know anybody who has never had back, neck, or shoulder pain. Right? So it's a pretty, it's a pretty common thing. And we, all, and we all put up with it. And we all deal with it. And it also, also makes our life miserable, I think, to some degree. So that, that posture and injury or pain connection is absolutely 
it's absolutely real, right? So bad, so bad posture really is when forces converge in vulnerable areas. That's one way that I define bad posture. Bad posture is inefficient. So I don't tell those teenagers, but when they sit like that, it takes a lot of energy. Maybe that's why they're tired and grumpy all the time, <laughs> right? And having good posture is very efficient. It doesn't take a lot of energy to maintain good posture. The vulnerable places in the spine are where those curves changes. Those curves change, right? So I told you that in your neck you have that inward curve, and in your mid-back you have that outward curve. Well, right between where it goes from an innie to an outie, right, that's a point. That's a vulnerable point. And it and it's, uh, makes sense that when people have uh, cervical disc problems, it usually comes right in that spot. You might have heard it before, like C6, C7. That's right where that transition is. And again, down in L4 and L5, in their lumbar disc, where you're going from an any to an Audi. That's vulnerable spots, and it's important. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. So let's get some good posture, shall we? Let's get a little good posture. Obviously, this is not good posture. So for good posture, you need to be flexible and strong, not tight and weak. So the few of you who are old enough to remember those Charles Atlas cartoons, Mac here was obviously a combination of not strong and, and not very flexible, so he had sand kicked in his face, but then he decided to do the right exercises through Charles Atlas, and then he started punching the guy in the face on the, on the beach. So you see how everything <laughs> is clearly right in the world, at least in the 1930s and 40s. So here's an easy posture test. And to do this, you need a wall. So hopefully most of you have a wall at home. If you don't, you need to get a wall. You are going to stand against the wall, and your goal is to get your head against the wall. Now, I'm not sure, I don't know if you can see this from the side. You probably can't see it from the side. But as, I, as I'm standing here, Joe, you can probably see it, that my head is away from the wall. Now, this is the first thing that I want you to do when you go home tonight. Ideally, I want you to do this in your bathroom because that's where, rear, uh, that's where a mirror is. I want you to see yourself in the mirror. And you just stand against the wall, right? And you feel where your head is. My head's off the wall. It's, it's off by a significant amount. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to try to get your head on the wall. I'm going to try to get my head on the wall. Yep, head's on the wall, right? So that's not what I want you to do. I want you to try to, you to get your head against the wall while keeping your chin down. So I should have a double chin. Now, one of the things that you probably should have heard, heard, did you hear how my voice changed, right? So think about how that changes your anatomy on the inside when you have good posture. Now, I'm going to tell you, this don't feel comfortable doesn't look natural, but that's where I'm supposed to be. Now, some of you have really good flexibility in your neck. I don't. I have a tight neck. So if there's anybody who would like to show what it looks like to have good posture, does anybody want to come up here and we can see what it looks like to have good posture? Does anybody want to try it? You, anybody want to break the... Go on, go on, come on, do it. Come on, do it. Yeah, yeah. Give her a little round of applause, shall we? Excellent. I appreciate that. And just stand up against the wall. Now look at that. That looks easy for her, doesn't it? So, so here's the thing that I'm looking for. Her feet can actually stay a little bit away from the wall, so you want to think about that when you do it tonight. Right? I want her back to be against the wall. Right? Nope, just like that, just the way you're doing. And then I want her head against the wall, like the back of her head, and I want her chin comfortably down. Right? Maybe even a little double chin. I know it doesn't feel good, but it's okay. Right? So that, right? So that, that's possible. She demonstrated it. Thank you so much. That is going to be your, well done, well done. That's probably always going to be your starting point for any postural exercise that you're going to do. So what I want you to do every day is just stand in that bathroom and try to do this. Try to give yourself a double chin. Now, I've got some work to do because I spend a lot of time on the computer, sitting, just like you, and this is probably something that I should do 
every day. I feel this in my shoulder blades. Isn't that something? Hmm. So this could be it. Now, when I can get like her, and I can get all the way against the wall, then what I want you to do is I want you to go, yes, Steve. <laughs> yes, Steve. Yes, Steve. I want you to nod. I want you to do a little bit of nodding. By the way, isn't this great? Because these exercises look pretty darn simple. Right? These are simple exercises, but don't confuse them with easy because they're not easy. Right? Because I am working hard, I can assure you. Right? So we did chin tucks. Then we did chin nods. Here's the next one I want you to do from this position. Rotate. Oh, dear. Rotate. Now, look, and this is what I want you to do. How far do I go to the right and compare it to how far I go to the left? Do I go further one way than the other? Yep. Now, I don't know if you can tell, but I can't go that way as far as the other way. Watch the other way that I'm going to cheat and that you're going to cheat as well. Watch this. Oh, yeah, I can do it. Yeah, I can do it. See, see what I did? Right? And you naturally do that all day because you don't have that wall to remind you of where this is. See the difference? Oh. So all my rotation is coming from down low, down in that spot where my curve goes from one direction to the other. So I'm slowly wearing away that disc in that lower cervical spine. See how this kind of adds up and it makes sense. So what I want you to do is I want you against that wall, you're going to nod your chin, right? And then you're going to try to rotate. Now, I'm not going to show you everything, but I'm going to show you a little bit. I'm not going to show you side bending, which is the other one that we teach people to do. But we don't need to, we don't need to talk about that right now. That's just, that's for later. Tricks with towels. So my able-bodied assistant is going to pass out towels to all of you. It's only going to take a minute. And while she's doing that, I want you to watch, I want you to watch my video. Now you have to be quiet so that you can hear it. Here it comes. Boy, if you're like me, you've been really at the computer a lot lately, and your neck is probably killing you. So I'm going to show you today how I fix my own neck real easy using only a towel. So you just take a regular towel, and you open it up, nothing special, and you put it around your neck, just like this. Now what you're going to do is you are going to now hold one side of the towel with your opposite hand, right? So in this case, I'm holding the left side of the towel with my right hand. And then I want you to take the right side of the towel with your left hand. And what I then want you to do is I want you to bring it up by your face and I want you to gently pull to one side as you're holding it down with your opposite one. So you're doing this. This is one of those fantastic stretches that you can do when you say, oh man, I just wish somebody would pull my neck at the end of the day. It feels so tight, it feels so tense. So let's try with the other side. Now you're gonna hold on here. And here it's my left hand on the right side of the towel. And then I'm gonna pull the towel like this. And I'm gonna stretch it this way. Now, you're nice and relaxed in your neck. You're not overdoing it. You are in control of the force that you place on your neck, so don't hurt yourself. I recommend this every single day for those of you who are working at the computer way too much. Steve Rapicelli from Performance Physical Therapy, and please stay tuned for more tips for your neck. Thanks. Now, I know that the good acting might have thrown you off a little bit in that video. And for the people I only have little towels, I'm sorry. You really do need a bigger towel to do it. I didn't watch everybody, but if somebody wants to show me, and you're like, I don't know if I got it or not, let's just take a minute. I want to make sure that everybody gets this thing right, because I'm telling you, when your neck is tired at the end of the day, this is so darn good. It feels wonderful. So 
you have, you have this towel. And, and the easy way to think about it is just cross your arms. Just cross your arms. And then one arm is going to come up across your temple. The other one is going to stay low, and you're just going to do that. So this bottom one is kind of holding your neck still, and this one that's coming across, that's the one that's doing the work. Hmm, like this. Ooh, nice. So you're really only pulling with this one. You're just holding on with this one. My goodness, what a good-looking group this is. <laughs> My goodness. Mm-hmm. Cross your arms. I'm going to correct some of you because I love you. You're going, to, you're going to start with your arms crossed. So I want your right hand to hold the left. Let, let go. Oh, that's right. Uh-huh. Now you got it. See? Okay. Cross your arms. And then one is just staying there and the other is pulling and doing the work. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> the other way. Now, it only took me about two years to figure out how to do that. <laughs> so you're okay if you don't get it. I will be happy to, to take each one of you individually tonight and make sure that you're doing it perfectly. Oh, thank you. Right, crush, crush your arms. Okay. No, nope, start with your arms crossed. Leave this here like this. Okay. And then cross your arms, let, let go. And go like this, oh, okay. and go like this. Okay. Now this one's staying, okay. th let's say this one stays, stays. here. This and one this goes one up one. like that, you're holding like that. Mm -hmm. That one's staying, and this one's doing the work. And how far do you? You go try. as far as you comfortably can. Okay. Now the beauty of this exercise is you are in control of it, <laughs> right? That's Use that's your good judgment, right? So if you go, oh, that's not, you wouldn't do that, would you? Of course you wouldn't. You're going to go gently, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Does anybody want, to, want me to watch them? You want to stand up and we can all watch you? <laughs> we can do that. If not, that's okay. But I, I definitely don't want you to leave until you get this, right? I'm also, by the way, I'm also going to be sending this presentation to every one of you so that you can watch this, right? And you can, you can watch the video over and over again and make sure you got it. Oh, my Lord, some of you don't have it. <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. So that's that. Any, any questions before I keep going forward? The challenge is that I'm asking you to actually use your muscles in your arm while letting your neck muscles be all nice and loosey-goosey. So, you know, if you're a naturally tense person, let's face it, you're going to tense up everywhere, right? So you have to kind of dissociate what you're doing with your hands with what you're doing with your neck. And some of you are better than that than others, but this is something that you, it, it takes perfect practice, makes perfect, all right? And I'm more than happy to go over this with anybody. Mm-hmm. Now, oh, so I have that one. More tricks with towels. More tricks with towels. This one's good. Again, note the good acting. But this is good. This is to help you sleep. Do you have neck pain? Does it bother you when you sleep at night? The question we get all the time is, how do I sleep with my neck pain? I have the answer that's easy and cheap. All you need is a towel and a rubber band. Take the towel, not too big, not too small. Make a rat tail out of it. You know what that is. You made one when you were a kid. Put it around your neck. Tie it with a rubber band. It's going nowhere. Lie down on your back. Ah. You can even lie on your side. It's going to follow you. Now, somebody turn out the lights. I'm trying to get some sleep. Again, don't be fooled by the good acting. So this is a wonderful way, uh, down and dirty trick, to get a good night's sleep. Because I notice that as I get older, Getting a good night's sleep is getting more and more of a challenge, right? I become high maintenance, and you're all becoming high maintenance. So, can I have your towel? So, 
you're just gonna make a rat tail. Now you remember this, you hold it just like this, just like you did to your brothers and sisters when you were a kid. This is about, you're about to get in trouble. You make a little rat tail, it doesn't have to be fancy. And you go like this, and you put the rubber band around it. And you put the rubber band around it because when you fall asleep, all bets are off, right? We all become a little bit traveling salesmen. We're going this way, we're going that way. We're gonna talk about why that is in a minute. You put that rubber band so that it stays in place. And here's the good news. This towel takes up the space between your neck and your shoulder to some degree. So that you ever find a good spot when you go to sleep and then you go to turn on your side and you know you wake yourself up and you wind up, my shoulder's numb or my hand is numb or my neck hurts, I got that kink back. This will help eliminate that. Now, it's not the most perfect thing in the world, but it will work. So I want you to experiment and all you little people probably use a littler towel which is not good English, and all you bigger people are going to need a bigger towel, find the right towel for you, right? So this is probably too big of a towel for you. It's probably a good towel for me, so experiment with it. But that is a great trick to help you with sleeping. I told you that... Um, Fixing your neck pain is a function of having flexibility and strength. So let's talk about some of the areas where you are all tight. So we'll start with flexibility. You are tight in your chest. Your chest muscles are tight. I know that because I'm watching you and you're a human, right? So what you do is you have breakfast, then you go driving, then you're on the computer, then you have lunch, then you watch a little TV, right? Then you have dinner, and you're watching more TV, and then you're on, right? Get the idea? So everything here is getting tight. Chest muscles are getting tight. The front of your hip muscles are super tight. And I know I know this because when's the last time you slept on your stomach? Right? Some people said, I haven't slept in my stomach, on my stomach in 25 years. Right? Well, sleeping on your stomach stretches out the front part of your thighs. And if your thighs are super, super tight and you go to lie in your stomach, it makes your back hurt. So when you go, oh, no, I don't like sleeping on my stomach because it makes my back hurt, it's really because you're, it's stretching out the front part of your hip muscles that are tight. So one of the things that I advise my patients to do is Every day, every night, when you go to bed, the first thing I want you to do is lie on your stomach for five to 10 minutes. How's that for an exercise? I want you to lie down. I, you can, everybody can sign up for that one. I, I can get behind that type of exercise program. So we're gonna talk about the front part of your, your, your uh, hips and what the, what the uh, fix is over here. Tight thighs, I told you that, and believe it or not, tight ankles. I am not gonna talk about tight ankles tonight. It's beyond the scope of this talk. I'm, uh, I'm just gonna to touch base with these and I'm gonna show you this one. All right, so I'm not gonna show you all my tricks, but I'm gonna show you some of my good ones. So let's talk about the doorway stretch. To do the doorway stretch, you need a door. So hopefully you have a door at home. If you don't have a door, we'll talk about that later. A doorway stretch is done like this. And I'm gonna demonstrate this way, but really, I want you to know that I'm, I really want you to do it this way. Because I, I don't have good purchase over on this side, but you get the point. I don't care where your hands are. Your hands can be up high. Your hands can be down low. Your hands can be far apart. Your hands can be close together. What I want you to do is I want you to put one foot in front of the other. And then I want you to try to lead with your head and you're gonna to start to feel a stretch in your chest and your shoulders. I want you to look like one of those old fashioned hood ornaments. <laughs> Just like that, right? Now notice that I'm not doing this. I'm not bouncing. I don't want you to bounce. I don't want both feet back here because guess what? Oh, I'm already putting too much pressure on my shoulders and my chest and I'm not gonna like that. 
I can control the force when I have one foot in front of the other. That's how I want you to do the doorway stretch. And then for all stretches, I want you to be uh, mellow. Right? As long as you can do it, that's great. That's how I want you to do it. Now, notice how persnickety I am getting with my instructions to you. You have to do them. You have to be persnickety. You have to be persnickety. That means you have to be very, very um, focused on every little aspect of it. And that's why uh, Google searching these exercises for neck pain are only going to get you so far. Right? I can, I can show you where they are on, on the internet and you can look at them and find them. But if you're not doing them just right, you're doing them wrong. So I caution you about that. That's only going to take you so far. You can do that as well. So you can play around with your hand position to focus on certain things or to avoid certain things. So for example, um, in the spring I had shoulder surgery on this side. I can't, I can't put my hand up here because it hurts too much. And I won't feel the chest stretch. I'll feel it in that shoulder that's still not 100% healed. But you can play around and get different focus in different body areas as you wish. So you can get a little jazzy with it as long as you're being safe and have good body mechanics. The standing thigh stretch. I talked a little bit about um, how I want you to lie on your stomach every night for five to ten minutes beginning tonight. That's, the first, that's what you're going to do first thing you do when you get in bed, just for five or ten minutes. Some of you will take ten minutes, some of you can't take five minutes, believe it or not. But I want you to do the standing thigh stretch. Now for the standing thigh stretch, I do have some, uh, some thoughts. All you need, all you need, that's my Delaware accent coming out. All you need is, is I, I tell people you just need a kitchen table and a kitchen, a kitchen chair. Right? So let's pretend that this is my kitchen table and here's my kitchen chair. You just pull your kitchen chair out. You're going to face your kitchen table. And again, I told you I'm persnickety. This is exactly how I want you to do it. You're going to bend over. You're going to hold on to the table. Pretend that's a table. You're going to put your knee on that dining room table, uh, di dining room chair, and then you're going to attempt to stand up straight. Some of you can't even do that. Right? So when you do it in the comfort of your own home tonight, you might be surprised that you can't even do that. I have you bend over because you're putting that tight muscle on slack. Right? Because if I did that, some of you are going to be like, oh, I can't even get up there. Right? So if you do this, that's going to give you more room. And of course, part of this is a function of the height of the chair. Right? So if I had a really high chair, it would, it would be more of a challenge. For some of you who have a really tight thigh, you might use a footstool, a good old Rubbermaid footstool, right? and put it up there and start there. Some of you won't be able to stand up all the way, and you're going to be like, oh, that really hurts my back. Note that it's really not a back problem. It's a tight hip problem. right? Because every one of you right now is tightening up the front of your hips right now, just by sitting, and just by driving here, and just by having dinner. Anytime you're sitting, you're doing it. And standing really doesn't do it either. It doesn't stretch out your hips. It's got to be this. So that's what I want you to do. Standing thigh stretch. Does that make sense to everybody? There's, there's some other subtle points to it that I won't get into, but it really is something that you probably should do every day. As long as you can. As long as you can. If you can do 10 seconds, great. 30 seconds, great. Two and a half minutes, knock yourself out. Right? What you're trying to do is you're trying to reverse all of the static postures that you're in most of the time. Right? And ever since COVID, boy, oh boy, we are really good at sitting around, aren't we? Strength. So I talked about flexibility, and flexibility is a big deal for your neck. And I showed you how to do that, right? At least some of them. But guess what? I hate to break it to you, but you're also weak. You're weak in the front of your neck. You're weak in between your shoulder blades. Oh, Lord, you are really weak in between your shoulder blades. You really are. Because everybody is, by the way. 
you're weak in your belly. That's, that's no surprise. And you got a weak butt. So if you came in here feeling good about yourself, <laughs> I righted that ship, didn't I? And here are the solutions. For a weak front part of your neck, we're going to do on your back head lift. I'm going to show you that one. Weak shoulder blades, stick em ups. I love stick em ups. Well, we're going to have some fun with stick em ups. Uh, I'm not going to show you a plank for your weak belly, and I'm not going to show you a one legged wall slide for your weak butt. You're just going to have to hold on to that weak butt for a while. <laughs> we're not going to fix your weak butt. Weak butt. Weak butt. See, God's making me not be able to pronounce it because he thinks I'll show you. All right, so on your back, head lift. That was a fancy way of describing this exercise. You're going to lie on your back. After you lie on your stomach for five to 10 minutes tonight, boy, you're going to really, you're going to have nightmares about me tonight, right? First thing you're going to do is you're going to do sunny side down. You're going to be on your stomach for five to 10 minutes. Then you're going to lie on your back, right? So a lot of these exercises are done in bed. How cool is that? You're going to lie on your back and you're going to take the pillow out from under your head. Now, some of you are really not going to like that. Some of you are like, mm -mm. nope, no thanks. And that's cool, right? So if you have a forward head posture like I do, you are totally allowed to take that, that towel and you're going to go like this and you're going to double it. Maybe you're going to double it again. And you're simply pretend I'm lying on my back, right? So here I'm lying on my back. And I'm like, oh, no, I can't do that. Can't, oh, I can't take it. Right? You just put it right here. Now you're good. Now at least you're comfortable and you're in your current neutral position. From there, you're going to lift your head up. Now, you have to do it my way. Note his double chin. You have to do it with a double chin. Meaning what I want you to do is I want you to pretend that you're looking at your toes in bed. So you're in bed and you're trying to look at your toes. Even if you have to look through your belly, it's okay. And just try to look at your toes and try to hold it there. <sighs> the bad news is that our patience, the expectation is you can hold it for seven seconds, which is one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi, and then let it come back down. Now, folks, that's a long time, right? What you're going to find is you're not going to be able to do it. You're not going to be able to do it. You'll start, your neck will start to shake or you won't be able to hold it. And you'll go back down. That's okay. We're starting, we're starting where we are. Come as you are, I say, right? So you might only be able to do that for three or four seconds. But what we do in physical therapy is we do seven repetitions of a seven second hold that'll start to strengthen your neck, right? And when you have strong neck muscles in the front, guess what then you're able to do? Then you're, you're able to hold it back here further, right? And then you have a more efficient posture. And then at the end of the day, at four o'clock in the afternoon, you're like, I just gotta lie down for 10 minutes. You don't have to do that anymore. Okay, so on your back, head lift. Does that make sense to everybody? And again, when you see, when you see this afterwards, because I'm going to send it to you, it'll make sense. Oh, Lord, how I love stick -em ups <laughs> Now, why are they called stick -em ups Because it looks like somebody's sticking you up, right? <laughs> now, I don't know what happened to the picture number one. I have no idea where it went. Um, but there was a picture here, and quite frankly, I don't even know what it is. But we're going to do stick -em ups That's the second position, the third position, and the fourth position. I'm going to show you how to do a stick -em up you need a wall. And I want you to stand against the wall. I want your feet away from the wall. And you are going to go forward, up, back and down, and then drop them. Got it? I would like a volunteer for this. Who would like to volunteer and be my subject? Who we all love you. Pat, please come up. And I'm hoping that it really looks lousy so I can point out lousy things. But knowing Pat, it's probably all good. So give her a little golf clap for coming up. Thank you. Thank you. So backs against the wall. Feet are away from the wall. I should probably say, is it okay if I touch you gently? Okay, good. 
feet away from the wall. Now you're going to go forward, you're going to go up, you're going to go back and down. Now that looked pretty darn good, didn't it? Yeah. Okay, drop it. Now I want you to do it slower because I want to point a couple things out that you, you're going to, I want you to pay attention to when you do it. All right, so forward and then up. The first thing you want to notice is do both of your arms come up and touch the wall? Some of you won't. And this is how, and this is, I'm going to do this. And this is, how you're, this is how it's going to look, maybe. Right, this one's going to go up and this one's going to go here. Or this one's going to go up and this one's going to go out to the side. Or these are going to go up and you're going to go, oh my God, that hurts. <laughs> or these are going to go up, watch this, and your butt's going to come away from the wall. Ah, right? So the other part of this is you want to keep your rib cage against the wall. Hmm. Right? Because if you're really tight back here, you won't be able to do that and your back will come away from the wall. Here's the next thing. As she slides her hands down, how you doing? Okay. As her, as her hands come down like this, one of them might go like this. So if you have a tight shoulder, rotator cuff problem, frozen shoulder, arthritis in my shoulder, you're not going to be able to do that. You won't be able to slide that hand against the wall. Right? And then finally, you want to feel a pinch in between those shoulder blades. That's what we're working on. So, go ahead and drop them, because boy, that's a long, whew, that was a long stick em up. <laughs> they took everything I had. Yeah, now, 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 I treated you actually many years ago, and I think it was for, I won't say it, something similar. So she kind of knows this one already, and she's very good at it. I'll give her a lot of credit for it. But if somebody doesn't mind, I wouldn't mind somebody else coming up and let's just see what a, a different person looks like. And you might be fine with it as well, too, or you might have a problem. But, you know, I think we'd all benefit from seeing it. So if somebody can do that, that would be good. Thank you, Pat. I appreciate it. So this, yes. So stick them ups will stretch your shoulders, stretch your neck, right? Strengthen the muscles in between your shoulder blades. Pat, did you feel between your shoulder blades? Yeah. yeah. Now, as little as 10 or 12 repetitions, you'll be sore the next day, amazingly. Does somebody else want to try it for the, for the group? And you don't have to. I'm not going to pause very long. Thank you. Of course you would. Yeah. Of course you would. Of course I would, but I want to tell you I have a torn rotator cuff. Ah, she's got a torn, torn. She's got a torn rotator cuff. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> Let's see what she looks like. Okay. So forward, forward, up, back, and down. Wait. Exactly. That's good because <laughs> that's how everybody is when they first do okay. them. They don't know. Okay. Right? So, so watch this. Let me do this. Okay. So forward, forward. then up, okay. and then back and down. Back. Got it? Yeah. And then drop them. Ooh. Okay. Let's, let's watch it. Ooh. I wasn't touching her. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Try forward, forward. up. Mm, I wonder if she yeah. arched that back a little bit. I saw a little bit of yeah, an arch there. Of course she did. Right? And <laughs> yeah. then, and then I'm, now I'm watching her hands. Are her hands staying on the wall? And can she slide them down the whole way? And then back and down. And actually, she looks pretty good doing this. Wait, just slide. Mm hmm. Okay. Yep. So, so, do, so do it again. Okay, feet out. So do it again. So I can have my head against the wall. Absolutely. Okay. Which looks fabulous. Okay, so forward. Mm hmm. Up. Mm hmm. Uh huh. And then just let them fall. Now was it? Thank you. <laughs> now, is that the first time you did them? I guess. <laughs> now that was the first time she did them, and I thought she did a great job. But of her between the. But she definitely feels it. Mm -hmm. She definitely feels it. So you might feel it in between those shoulder blades, because I guarantee you, all those muscles in between your shoulder blades have been doing this all day today, mm -hmm. all all day. So doing this Ooh. is is odd. Right? Mm -hmm. So only, only doing about 10 or 12 of them is plenty. If you do them for two weeks in a row, I guarantee you'd be amazed at how much better you would do. If you want to have fun and if you have a significant other or a spouse tonight, have them do this and, and make fun of them and see how they do. It'll, te it'll test your relationship. All right, thank you. You can go ahead and sit down. So I really, really like stick em ups. Stick em ups is a good one two punch because it both strengthens and stretches a lot of what's causing your neck pain. I guarantee it. So please try to do those, uh, those stick em ups. Got it? They're that important. Oh my goodness, pillow talk.
let's have a little pillow talk, shall we? <laughs> now, I can talk a long time about pillow talk. I want to talk about two things. Really, I want to talk about pillow talk, but I also want to talk about your bed. Right? Because there's two things that you should spend money on. Your bed and your shoes. Right? Because between those two, that's where you spend most of your time. So bed, pillow, and shoes. I want you to buy a, the firmest mattress you can. I'm telling you right now. I want you to buy the firmest mattress you can. Now it says here, hey, don't get a too firm mattress because then it's not going to meet all the curves in your body. And it says, and don't buy one that's too soft because then it sags. You want to buy just the right one so that your spine is in a neutral position. I get that. But I will tell you, I can always make a firm mattress soft. I can't make a soft mattress firm. Some people say put a piece of plywood in between the box spring and the, and the uh, mattress. I don't do that. Nobody does that. Right? So buy the firmest mattress you can and then use a really nice mattress pad to make it softer and what's best for you. Now, in an ideal world, because we're all adults here, in an ideal world, you would not be sleeping with anybody else. I think Ozzy and Harriet had it right. You should have your own darn bed. Ozzy and Harriet was a TV show. Right? You should probably sleep in your own bed so you can have it just the way you want. Right? And it should be a queen size bed or a king size bed just for you. There, I said it. But if you can't, there are some tips and tricks uh, uh, about sleeping uh, with a spouse, and that might be beyond this talk. But um, what I want you to think about is I want the pillow and I want the bed to result in your spine being as neutral as possible. Now, what the heck does that mean, Steve? Neutral means that it's not flexed. It's not extended, it's not side bent, it's not twisted. Now, here's the challenge. Here's my pillow. Ooh, I'm sleeping on my back. My neck's in a neutral position. I'm loving life. But guess what? I snore. And the way that I can keep myself from snoring is lying on my side, right? You know that's a trick. If you lie on your side, you don't snore as much. For those of you who don't snore, it's a secret. You go, get on your side. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Now here's the problem. Now I'm sleeping on my side with that same pillow, and guess what? That ain't right, right? So the distance does not equal the distance between my neck and my shoulder. So here I am lying here, and now I'm like this, right? Now I got neck pain. Now I wake up, and I'm not happy. I got a crick in my neck, I didn't sleep well, I heard you snoring, I had to get up and use the restroom, all that stuff from not having the right pillow. So in an ideal world, an ideal world, the kind of pillow you should look for is a pillow that is thinner in the middle and thicker on the side. Now I want to explain to you, I'm running out of time. I want to explain to you the concept of rolling versus spinning. Spinning, when an object spins, it turns without moving, uh, you know, without an excursion. I just spun, right? I stayed in the same spot. Here's rolling. See how I moved? Another reason you should be sleeping by yourself, because when you got somebody else with you, what do you wind up doing? You wind up spinning. Right? You can't roll because you got that person right there. So you wind up spinning, and now it's impossible to find the right pillow. So the ideal pillow is big enough to allow you to roll, and you should roll onto either side that's thicker than the middle. Does that make sense? So I got the pillow. Now. I'm saying this because we have found the pillow. This pillow, see how it's got a divot in there? And see how it's big here? Because people ask me all the time, 
I wish there was a good pillow. Should I get the pillow that's made out of the cocoa shells and the buckwheat and the, the stuff that I can put in the microwave and make them warm? You know, and you, know, you should have like a, 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 everybody has a collection of pillows in the closet. I know I do. Still haven't found the right one until this one. Ah, nice. When I'm ready to roll, I roll, and it goes up. Now, here's the other thing I like about this pillow. See how it's got a shelf? See that shelf? So when I lie on my side, my shoulder goes there, right? So now I'm really comfortable. Now, I didn't believe this. I didn't believe that there was a pillow like this, and I didn't believe that it would be good. She doesn't know that I'm about to put her on the spot. But my facilities manager, Tricia, stand up, Tricia. She said, there's this pillow. These people make it in England, and they want us to try it out and give it to, you know, sell it to our patients. And I'm like, whatever. I said, do whatever you want. Three days later, you come back, and what do you say, Tricia? Best night's sleep I've ever had. <laughs> I said, what? Best night's sleep I ever had. So then I said, okay, Trisha, go into action. If, that, if, if you believe it, then we'll try it. And so I said, we want to we wanna recommend this pillow to people. And we've been, we've been selling them. Groove pillows. So you go online, go to Groove Pillows, and you get one of these pillows. You see how you lie on your back and you got that divot in there? And then you roll on the side and then you got that. So you go up and you'll still be in neutral. This is why you need to sleep by yourself. Go ahead. So I must be a small majority, but I sleep on my stomach to go to sleep. Can you use that for your stomach? Nope. Okay. <laughs> nope. Oh, oh, and, by, and by the way, even though everybody tells you that sleeping on your stomach is bad, I don't necessarily think that uh, sleeping on your stomach is bad. But I also think that you have to have a tiny, 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 tiny pillow, very small. Because if not, look what happens. You know, you're up here like this. And that's, that's not good for your neck. So I don't think sleeping on your stomach is bad. What do you think of the contour pillow? That's what I use. Well, if you have a pillow that you, if you have a pillow that you love, that's a perfect pillow for you. I think that everybody's just a little bit different, right? And if you, if you whatever works for you, keep it. I don't care what anybody tells you, if it's good or bad, I don't care. If you like it, and if you wake up refreshed, that's the pillow for you. But if you're battling, I can't find the right darn pillow, and it's a pillow fight, and it's a battle royale every night, I want you to try this. I definitely want you to do that. And if you pop in a discount code, this, PPT1, get it, you get 10% off. How cool is that? That's my kind of gift to you, so this is what I want you to try. Right? You don't, you don't have to be in, in, wake up uh, and be ornery all the time. Uh, you'll, you'll get it in the, you'll get it in the uh, when I send it to you, you'll see it. How about that? I thought of everything. Now, you just learned a lot, right? And I'm definitely running out of time. I, I've only just, there's so much more that I could be telling you, little tips, little tricks. Um, but I just can't do it. I got I to gotta go. I haven't eaten all day, believe it or not. And you're probably getting tired. But of course, and this is the part I love, I have an incredible, can I make you an incredible offer? This is so much fun. It's so much fun. I have an incredible offer. Are you ready to finally fix your neck? Well, I'm going to make it so that you're going to feel crazy if you don't take me up on this. See, she's not crazy. She's happy because she took me up on this offer. And I thought about this a long time. What could I do that's so insane you'd be crazy not to do it? Here's Steve's incredible offer. By the way, I'm Steve. <laughs> this is my incredible offer. I have three of these pills with me tonight. This is one of them. Right? So if you want this darn thing tonight, Raven is out front. Take the 10% off now. Take it home with you and start sleeping better now. Right? And that's just for people who are like, door dash it. I want it now. I want everything right now. I want it to start now. She's got three pillows. I'm holding one of them. That means she's got two other ones out there. Whoever wants it, you got it. Take the 10% off. You're done. Obviously, I'm not doing it for that, but what the heck? I'm crazy.
But wait, here's Steve's even more incredible offer. Right? If you schedule tonight for an evaluation in the next two weeks with one of our doctors of PT, I'm going to give you the pill for free. Right? Because I want to kill neck pain. Now, the vast, a lot of you have already been here before, so you know what this is all about. You know what good feels. And you know what the benefit is. The benefit is you've got a doctor of physical therapy to look you over. Because I gave you general guidelines. Right? I showed you like 30% of, of what it takes to fix your neck because I only have an hour. And I don't know if you're doing this stuff right or not. I don't know. I'm not watching you. You probably need somebody watching you, right? So it's not just learning. It's learning to do it right. So perfect practice makes perfect. And therefore, I want you in here. That's what we do for a living. That's what we've been doing for 30 years. So yeah, I want you to take advantage of it now because all of you have neck pain, just like I do, and shoulder pain. And all of you think that it's going to be better next week, and it's not, and it's just making you grouchy, and now it gets dark early, and now you're like, oh, I just want to hibernate, and then, you know, because that's exactly what I said last, last two weeks. Ah, but wait, there's more. <laughs> just when you thought I was insane, I'm more insane because I'm going to throw in two free stretching sessions at StretchPlex. Has anybody ever heard of StretchPlex? Right? So we started this thing, and, and I'm, I'm going to pick on somebody else. Patty, Peppy, go ahead. Just tell them if it's good or not. Right? And Patty has a stiff neck. And I saw her in church, and I said, Patty, I want you to get in and get stretched out. Just please do that for me because I want you to, I want you to feel better. I can tell you're holding your neck like a block of wood, and you don't need to do that. And I won't go into Patty Peppy's story too much. I probably shouldn't even use her last name. I'm sorry. But you're not, you're not a patient, so I can say it. Just getting somebody's hands on you to stretch you out oh, yeah. feels good. Like that, I mean, at my age, I, I pay people to touch me anymore just to do that, just to stretch me out. And it's the way I think of it, it's like massage without taking my clothes off. So I'm going to give you two of these fr uh, stretching sessions, and we'll have a body coach stretch you out. And it doesn't have to be your neck. It could be everything. It could be anything. And if you've never had one, it's my gift to you just because I want you to feel it. It's so darn good. But Steve, what if I have health insurance? Use your health insurance. Right? Come in, be a regular patient and say, here's my insurance and go ahead and charge it. And that's fine. So we certainly take insurance. But what if I don't? Then, then, you, then you pay cash. It's $99 for the evaluation. It's real simple. $99, you get a doctor of physical therapy to do an evaluation on you. And this is what you're getting. You're getting a thorough exam by a doctor of physical therapy. You get expert hands on you. How about that for an offer? I wouldn't mind that. Comprehensive plan of action for you because you know what? She's got a torn rotator cuff. So her exercises are going to be different from hers. And she might have, you know, something else going on that I have no idea. So. Like I said, you can go and Google search stretches for neck pain, or you can get somebody to actually look you over and give you a customized program. I guarantee you, I guarantee that you'll be doing your exercises correctly after one of the doctors of physical therapy makes sure that you're doing it and they give you the program. Now, not all the exercises are going to be lie on your stomach when you go to bed for five minutes. They may not all be that, but you're already going to be doing that, right? So, I think, let's recap. You're going to get an amazing, you're going to get the amazing sleep like a baby neck-saving pillow for free. How cool is that? You're going to get two free stretch sessions with a certified body coach from StretchPlex. How cool is that? And you get a physical therapy evaluation to fix your nagging neck pain for good. I, I honestly think, I couldn't tell you this if I didn't believe it but treated thousands of people with neck pain, and I don't, want, I don't want you all to have neck pain, right? You don't have to suffer through this. You can get better. You can get relief. I'm almost guaranteeing you, because there's always somebody who breaks the mold, but I can pretty much guarantee you, you do this, you're going to feel somewhat better. You might feel 100% better. You might feel 90% better, but you're going to feel better than what you're doing right now. So with that, I want to thank you a ton. Get it? Thank you a ton. Thank you a ton. 
And I will open it up to any questions. If you have questions, I will stay around as long as it takes. I will watch every one of you do any of those exercises, if that's what it takes, because I want you to do it right. I want to thank you for your time and attention. Did you learn anything tonight? Yes. Fantastic. So I want to thank you. There's plenty of food out front. Oh, there's also some goodie bags for you. Raven will hand you a goodie bag on your way out. Please enjoy the rest of the food. Have some fellowship with each other if you want. Question.